Hello everyone, welcome to another practice question review video. Let's just jump right into it. I'm going to read the question out loud if it helps anyone out there, so you can skip ahead if you don't really feel like hearing me do that. The question states, RymarTech's cybernetic division has set up a redundant site in Arizona in case their main site in Virginia experiences a facility-wide disaster. The Arizona site includes all the same hardware, software, applications, and access control mechanisms as the main site. Some of the things which have changed include the private IP address schemes of the network segments, as well as the internet-facing web server IP address. While all the same network engineers and systems administrators who set up the main Virginia site also set up the Arizona site, they did so without the official documentation from their main site. Despite the homogenous environment, Rymer Tech senior management would still like to make sure all security testing done at the main site is also done on the redundant site for proper assurance. What is the best way to discover potential vulnerabilities at the redundant site? What is the answer? What is the answer to the CISSP practice question? Is it A, penetration testing? If you're sli slightly giggling about that word in your mind right now, penetration testing, I assure you, so am I. I still haven't grown up. I, I got a two-year-old son. I'm about to have a daughter. I got a nice 401k plan, health insurance, a mortgage, you know, adult stuff. And I still laugh every time I hear penetration testing, and so do my coworkers. We, st we still haven't all grown up at all. Or is the answer B, black box testing? Is it C, vulnerability testing? Or is it D, white box testing? First thing you wanna do is eliminate two of the choices right away. It gives you a way better shot at getting the answer right. And since you'll be taking the new CAT exam, you can't go back a question. You wanna get the questions right after a nice thorough analysis of all of them. And the more you do this with each practice question, the faster and more efficiently you'll be able to do it on the real exam. This is why I recommend taking at least 5,000 practice questions before taking the real exam. And not 5,000 questions from one source, but multiple sources, so you can get multiple viewpoints and multiple observations. I don't really know of any site which offers 5,000 straight quality CISP uh, questions. You just have to find the ones that are out there and combine them for a sum total of 5,000. Okay, so which two choices can we eliminate? If we look at the choices, you can kind of see that there are pairs of common terms. I think black box testing and white box testing go together, right? They seem like they're in the same category of testing. They may have different definitions, but most likely belong together in the same category. Same with penetration testing and vulnerability testing. They may have different definitions, but pretty much sound like they belong in the same category. At this point, we can probably safely say that we're going to be eliminating either choices uh, A and C, or we're going to be uh, eliminating choices B and D. And after we do that, we have a 50% chance of picking the right answer. That's a lot better than a 25% chance. Now the next step is to scan the question again and see which pair of choices we can forget about, which two pair of choices we can eliminate. We have to see which two choices don't real align with the context of this question. And really, we have to see which three choices, since there's only one correct answer. The question is essentially talking about a company which has set up a redundant site, but it has not yet undergone a full security test to look for potential vulnerabilities. That term, potential vulnerabilities, that's important to focus on. Remember that. Potentially vulnerable. Just because this redundant site is set up like the main site, doesn't mean it is as secure as the main site. Remember, the question says that there are still slight differences, like the IP addresses and the fact that the same documentation wasn't used. New private IP addresses means new no network subnet addresses. A new public-facing IP address for the web server means hackers are now trying to constantly port scan, ping sweep, DDoS, SSH, Telnet, or RDP to whatever that new IP is. Couple all this with the fact that the network engineers and systems administrators didn't use official documentation, which basically means they winged it or did it from memory. This can create misconfiguration vulnerabilities. So, you know, someone forgetting to update a certain computer or a certain machine. Maybe they're creating subnets with more hosts than they, than they should. All of that. If official documentation were followed, then theoretically and at a high level, these kinds of mistakes wouldn't exist. Remember, the CSP exam is based in a perfect security world. If all rules of security are followed at a high level and in accordance with concepts, then there should be no mistakes or issues. This is how you should approach the exam. 
approach it like a consultant who can recommend but can't change or touch anything. And couple that approach as if whatever security control you implement that is recommended in your CSV study guides, that is the best course of action you can possibly take. It may not align with the real world, but that's how you have to think going into the exam. A lot of the answers you need for the CSP exam are right in front of you in your books. You just have to read it. It's all there. And it's not just reading and memorizing, it's reading and understanding. And the understanding only comes from either a lot of real life experience or constant reading. I had to do constant reading. I didn't have any experience. I, I was working in network security as I was studying for the CSP exam. But I had about a year experience, but I had three books which I read three times over. Okay, we've said that the redundant site is just like the main site. It's set up just like the main site, but without any security testing. And this new site has new IP addresses and has been set up without documentation. What kind of test would discover potential vulnerabilities? Let's first look at choices B and D, as they look like they're in the same category, even if they have different definitions. Is it D, white box testing? What is white box testing? White box testing is when a security tester or auditor has full knowledge of the organization. This person knows the access control mechanisms, the technical controls, the physical controls, how the processes operate and swim throughout the company, everything. They know all the intimate inner workings. Is there anything in the question which gives us a hint or alludes to the fact that the correct answer is white box testing? What question are we trying to answer again? What is the best way to discover potential vulnerabilities at the redundant site? That's the point of this question. We're trying to answer that question. Can white box testing be the best way to discover potential vulnerabilities given the context of the question? It would be a good way, right? If you know all the inner workings, then you have a deep understanding of the organization, along with all the potential vulnerabilities and exploits. Or maybe you even know the vulnerabilities already, but are looking for others. Then again, if you do have a deep understanding of the organization and you do do white box testing and you are familiar with everything, maybe you're not the best person to do the test. Maybe white box testing isn't the best way. Because sometimes if you see the same thing every day, you get used to it. Your eyes get used to it. You get acclimated to it and might miss something that's been in plain view the whole time. You know how you sometimes ask someone to provide a second pair of eyes in case you miss something? That type of stuff. And also, and probably the best reason, a potential attacker isn't going to know all the inner workings of the organization. You want to perform a test from the point of view of the attacker, which would be known as black box testing. In black box testing, the security tester has zero knowledge of the company. They are approaching to test the organization's security controls like a hacker would, the same perspective. To truly discover a company's weakness, I think black box testing is the way to go. However, is B black box, black box testing still the best answer? Is it still the best way to discover potential vulnerabilities at the redundant site? Does the question discuss or give away any information in which a white box or black box testing could be the best course of action? The question is about a redundant site set up just like the main site, but it has not undergone any security testing in this new environment. It doesn't, it doesn't mention anything specifically about requiring a white or black box test. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate choices B and D for now and try to narrow the answer down to either choices A or C. Is the answer A penetration testing? What is a penetration test? It's ethical hacking. It's white hat hacker stuff. The good guys who get approval from the company in writing in order to perform exploits and look for one or more vulnerabilities. It's when senior management of an organization has given or is given actual proof that yeah, someone can potentially or actually already has essentially hacked the company. Just FYI, hacker or hacking is a term I kind of cringe to use sometimes. I'm just saying for the purposes of making things easier in this video, just so we are, we're all kind of understanding each other. But hacking to me really is just using or doing or using something in a way that it was not meant to be used. It's not just about defacing websites or stealing private information, but it can be good things too. Like, um, uh, I don't know, in the winter time, when I go pick a pizza in my car and bring it back to the house, I don't want the pizza to get cold, so I turn on the seat warmer on the passenger side to keep it somewhat warm. It kind of works. Or if you need to extend the range of your car's fob key, then just press the keys against your neck. It extends the range using the heat of your body temperature. I think that's how it works, but I know it does work for sure. 
That's what hacking is to me. It can be good or it can be bad. It's just another way of doing things. Don't let people who call themselves hackers get all the credit. You can be a hacker too. Anyway, is the choice penetration testing? Let's look at how we defined penetration testing earlier. It's ethical hacking. It's white hat hacker stuff. And the good guys who get approval from the company in writing in order to perform exploits and look for one or more vulnerabilities. One or more vulnerabilities. One or more. According to both the Cybex and Sean Harris, penetration testing is to test specific well, let's just say this. When it comes to penetration testing, the tester is looking to exploit a specific vulnerability or maybe a few vulnerabilities. They are most likely not doing an entire test of the organization's entire system, which is what zero risk security is looking for. They just moved to a new site. Nothing has been tested yet. Even if it's the same hardware, software, and application, they still need to undergo a new security test for that location. And yeah, the IP address is changing is something new, but that was a focused distraction. We're not looking to just test the IP address schemes. Senior management has stated that they would like to make sure all security testing done at the main site is also done on the redundant site. What, what I'm trying to say is the difference between penetration testing and vulnerability testing exists. They are not the same thing. Vulnerability testing, which is the correct answer to this question, by the way, is a, most, is a more comprehensive testing of potential vulnerabilities which exists spanning the entire organization. Because vulnerability testing is so comprehensive, it is even recommended to use an automatic scanning tool instead of having one person like an ethical hacker do it. It would be faster with a scanning tool, and a scanning tool would probably do a more accurate job to pinpoint vulnerabilities. It would do a better job because that's what an automated scanning tool is supposed to do. That's what it was created for. It's a lot less time consuming than having one person test every single vulnerability. Not to mention that person is a person and not a machine. And machines don't usually make mistakes. Or get lazy. Vulnerability testing also does not actually perform an exploit. This is really, uh, really important. Vulnerability testing also does not actually perform an exploit and compromise any systems. Vulnerability testing is just that, testing for vulnerabilities. This is not a test to actually perform an attack. Okay, very important to know that. Penetration testing will actually exploit the vulnerability. It will actually compromise a real system in a real world scenario with real world consequences. Look, if you're kind of getting bored or getting tired of listening to this video, at least just remember this piece of advice. It's a major thing to know for the CSP exam. Always, always obtain a written document in which the organization has explicitly given you, an ethical hacker, permission to compromise their system within a given set of para parameters. If you don't get this permission and you perform a penetration test, then that's called hacking and you go to jail. The difference between hacking and ethical hacking is permission. Okay, since the organization has a completely new site, they are looking for the best way to discover potential vulnerabilities at the redundant site. And the best way to do this is C, vulnerability testing. For one, the question really only just says discover, not exploit. Choice A, penetration testing, will discover and exploit, but it is not meant to be comprehensive. As for choices B and D, even if you weren't too clear about their definition, here's the real core concept we're trying to get at here. Black box and white box testing fall under a type of security testing. There can be a type of penetration testing. There can be a type of vulnerability testing. Additionally, black and white testing isn't a type of testing. It's like, uh, we can say we want a, you know, it's, this, is how we, this is how it's spoken about in the real world. We can say we want a black box penetration test or we want a white box vulnerability test. Black box penetration test means the attacker has no knowledge of the organization and its inner workings. A true test from a hacker's perspective. A white box vulnerability testing would be, you know, the scanning tool knows all the vulnerabilities, all the access control mechanisms, and it will test each one to see where the vulnerabilities exist. So choices B and D fall under the umbrella of choices A and C. And on the CISP exam, you want to pick the higher level answer, the higher level concept. In this case, it would be either penetration testing or vulnerability testing. And we have concluded that the choice is C, vulnerability testing. If you have any questions about this video, just email me. We can talk about it. Okay? To end this video, I'd just like to say once again, penetration testing, and thanks for watching.